Owen the Video Guy. I am about to go live on the poster session, so let's go check it out. three different times. The only difference is that one of the sites that was displaying all of these uh, sex traffic ads, it was removed at this point. So we see that there's a drastic drop. Yeah. that was passed last year by the Congress, which basically asked the website to Streaming the conference. Sorry? I'm live streaming. Okay. Do you want to talk about your project at all? Uh, I'm working with uh, incorporating batch effect correction. I learned the dimensionality of the data using a novel uh, use of priors, non local priors. So my model has two aims. The first one is to create a flexible model that can capture the batch effect or human error. And second one, to learn all this latent, hopefully biological information while learning the cardinality with a, uh, with a novel type of priors that can be applied to other type of models, but in this model it's just factor analysis. And I'm using that for cancer data set, in this case ovarian and lung cancer and trying to predict very better survival rates with that. That's it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There were like actual things on four And here is a paper in case you're interested in to learn more about this. We have the only thing that you have to know is how many number of people. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. James Warner. But all you've given to it is just a mixture of This is, so say you have a set of cells and then, you know, with the gene expression thing, this is the drug you're using to perturb those cells. Yeah. So this is basically just referring to the same drug that's used to perturb those cells okay. is the drug that we have the structure of. Okay. So we're not perturbing the structure at all, we're just taking the structure as okay. is. But yeah, that might be kind of easy. Yeah. 
streaming some of the projects. Do you guys want to talk about them at all or do you want to finish having lunch first? <laughs> I can come back, don't worry. Thank you. 
streaming for the conference. Do you guys want to talk about the project at all? or? Sure, yeah. Um, sure, so the goal of our project was to systematically learn from biological data the comprehensive set of biological pathways that exist in different cell types. Um, so we worked with single cell RNA sequencing data and we employed two different machine learning and deep learning methods. Um, one is variational autoencoders, the other one is topic modeling, to try to identify and tease apart some of these biological modules that exist in an unbiased, systematic, and comprehensive way. Great. So some of the problems that exist with the current um, catalog, it's been very useful for several things, but um, uh, it's very much been manually curated by individual experiments over time, depending on sort of uh, what cell models people had, what um, what topics are particularly interesting, and then it also has yet to sort of look at a more systematic, like gene programs writ large, rather than individual genes that are important or like turned on or off for particular um, particular cell types. Uh, and the data set we were working with is actually really great for testing these different models on. It's a reprogramming data set that starts with these mouse embryonic fibroblasts, so this terminally differentiated cell type, and then reprograms it back over uh, 18 days. So you see over here, reprograms it back over 18 days. We start with a mouse embryonic fibroblast, um, and we have this DOX phase, which sort of induces the transcription factors for reprogramming, and we split it off into two different conditions. The, um, the serum is just the sort of like the same environment that this was in, and the 2i adds two particular inhibitors to stop other cell fates, and we're trying to get it back to a uh, pluripotent stem cell. However, the reprogramming is not perfect, and some of them escape into different cell types, like neural cell types, or stromal, or, you know, um, 
epithelial or trophoblastic. So we have, uh, oh, and then finally, every cell's ancestor and descendant have been predicted. So we actually know like the full map of the, the full trajectory of the cells. Um, so this is a great place to start uh, start testing with data. Um, so can you explain how the auto works? Sure. So one of the key um, aspects of what we were trying to do was tease apart the signal from the noise. Um, and one way we wanted to represent that was to see using the autoencoders whether we could represent each cell rather than representing it by 19,000 genes, which was the original space, to instead condense it down to 10 features that represent each cell and to identify whether these 10 features are enough to recapitulate important qualities about the cell, such as the cell type or the time point in the experiment at which the cell was collected. So as you can see in this latent feature, um, latent figure here, here and then these three here. Here we have colored each of the cells in the 10 dimensional space by the cell type. And so we see that it does a pretty good job of distinguishing the, for example, neural cells from the pluripotent stem cells from the stromal cells. Um, similarly, for the time points, we can see here that there's a, uh, the latent space actually captures the trajectory of a cell over a given time point, starting from the purple all the way to red. And it's a very smooth recapitulation, despite only being represented by very few features. So this hints to us that, okay, there's a lot of extra information that we have in the data set that may not actually be helpful in representing what's biologically happening, but if we can condense it down, we can start to identify what are the cohesive groups that are actually the most functionally important. And then another aspect that was really interesting about autoencoders is that they've been used in the past to just denoise the data that we have. So we looked at transcription factors, which are very important because they can represent specific functions um, within a cell. And so we looked before and after using the autoencoder and tried to identify whether there were groups of transcription factors that were correlated with each other. We found that almost no correlation existed prior to this denoising step, but after running them through the autoencoder, we um, these are essentially actually uh, predicted expression counts for each of the transcription factors, we found that there is, in fact, biologically relevant modules that appear. And they recapitulate like known biologically relevant groups of transcription factors, which is right. fantastic. Right. When Amika says denoising, she means we're running it through the autoencoder, condensing it down to the latent space, and then running it, and then decoding it into the same shape of the matrix that it was originally. So, as Nico said, it's predicted values of the RNA expression levels. Right. And uh, we think that could be useful for actually then using this denoise matrix and feeding it into other methods, which I will talk about. Yeah. So the other method that we were using to look at um, was uh, topic modeling, which is a soft clustering method that's often used in natural language processing. In natural language processing, you have a series of documents, each with numbers of words, and uh, by feeding in the word counts for each document, you choose a number of topics, and it uh, it does a soft mapping of each of the words to a particular topic, starting with uh, equal probabilities for each word among all the number of topics, and then picking from the latent Dirichlet uh, space and assigning probabilities of a word being in a particular topic. Um, and this is really attractive uh, to us, uh, for biology in particular, because um, genes are not necessarily only involved in one particular program and not involved in any of the others. And documents, or cells, uh, can be a mixture of two different cell, cell states. Um, so as I alluded to, here the documents are cells and the genes are words. Um, and the word count in a particular document is that expression level in that document, so the number of mRNA transcripts. Um, and so we did a simple model with, with five topics, just using the raw counts. And we can actually see we are getting some of these cell types defined. So here, um, this in yellow is the uh, topic one, and it's the pluripotent stem cells, which almost exactly maps here to the cells that were defined to be pluripotent. Here we see a very nice like neural phenotype that matches sort of this wing of neural identity over here. Um, here we're getting some of the stromal cells, which is the connective tissue, but it's really missing out on the fibroblasts that were over here uh, and sort of assigned those to like a different topic when biologically we know they're, they're, um, they're pretty cohesive. And here it just got very confused with like a lot of the heterogeneity. So we tried decoding the matrix, denoising it, and feeding it in again to the same model, or uh, excuse me, to the same, uh, same Dirichlet. And uh, we actually get a much better model. So um, we're still getting these pluripotent stem cells here, but we're, we're also getting these tracts of developing pluripotent cells that are defined in the cell set and biologically defined that we were really missing over here. They really didn't get any sort of, of those trajectories. Here we get a much better um, defined look at the uh, neural cell set, especially with the neural precursors. Here we've actually combined the stromal and the um, 
fibroblast cell types, which are again really defined well in the particular cell set. Um, however, we're still getting confused by a lot of the heterogeneity, and so our next steps are we're currently looking into models that incorporate higher clustering. But this is um, a, a great positive for us that we can actually one predict cell types and then two uh, see that the denoise the denoising of the matrix using the autoencoder actually works. Yeah. yeah. So we're also moving into um, uh, some other different methods of, of doing soft clustering as well as uh, clustering using actually the latent space and trying to see how many latent like if we can cl make informative clusters based on the latent features uh, and how many latent features capture you know most of the the, the standard rate. Exactly. And in biology, there is clearly a hierarchy in cell types and also in genomic modules. And so some of the methods that we're trying right now are trying to hopefully tease apart some more of the different levels that exist. Cool. Yeah. Great. Thank Thanks, you. guys. That was awesome. <laughs>
basically a human uh, a human will be brighter or the temperature of a human will be higher uh, than its surrounding sunlight so the silhouette will be brighter so we are using this concept uh, and using a neural network uh, the faster rcnn model architecture to be able to predict bounding boxes around uh, uh, to be able to predict the bounding boxes around the humans now after our, uh, during our experiments we found out that even though the model was working very well for say night test images it's not working that well for the day images so in order to incorporate that like the color images thing into the uh, into this uh, framework so we are proposing the use of saliency maps in order to be able to uh, i mean predict the day images properly uh, properly so basically saliency maps are uh, in an image a saliency map uh, map will be the a blob where the pixel values are much higher so after using a very uh, naive way of getting the saliency maps we figure uh, like our results for the uh the test images are better are actually uh, becoming better so the next step is to train a deeper uh, deeper model in order to be able to generate the saliency images and then uh, uh, have a fuse a fusion network architecture which will be able to do this uh, job cool thank you <laughs> Um, and I found that the random forest and canary slippers work very similarly in terms of as a function of alto norm if we're using that as a metric. Um, although initially the canary slippers probably performed a little better, but the random forest performed better after a lot of fine tuning. Um, other people in my lab were working with different types of methods, including a support vector machine and a neural network, um, because we're trying to publish a paper that analyzes, that compares different ML models for um, being able to predict energy levels from oligopeptides, um, which will be able to tell us how proteins fold. Um, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> You want to swap? This thing's running. Oh, this is, this is, yeah, so we're just keeping the stream going until, uh, well, 1.30 to say that here, 41, 21. So why don't you start another like, four or five minutes? And then I'm like, knock down the stream. And, uh, you got it. 
Sorry. I'm sure in real life it'd be impossible. So I actually work with Buddy Dean on the Different, from different angles. Yeah. So that's gonna, that's like, that, that's not a plain image, it's not like a Google image, it's uh, your car from different angles. Yeah. Right? So it should be more difficult, more difficult to, to, to cost for a lot of all that. Uh, but yeah, so that's the reason I was asking how that was. Uh, we have like similar Thank you. 